In Kenya's Maasai heartlands, living conditions are harsh. The traditional Manyata mud huts are modest homes with no electricity or sanitary facilities. Olympia Kiplagat has plans to upgrade them. The Eco Manyata was um, born out of um, necessity. You can see for the old Manyatas, they're quite, um, the, the rendering they use, it needs to be repaired quite a bit with the cow dung. It's also very dark inside and not very well lit. Um, there's a lot of smoke coming out from the house. So there's a lot of diseases associated with the old Manyata. So we are trying to improve that and still maintain the original loft shape of the Manyatas. Cow dung mixed with mud is not a very durable building material. The old Manyatas need constant maintenance, mainly done by women. The poor hygiene standards attract flies that cause disease in children. And cooking with firewood is unhealthy and unsustainable. The life before in a traditional Manyata was very hard because the women have to get up very early to collect firewood to prepare breakfast for their children and when the children have set off to school, then they embark on repairing the house where it needs to be repaired, which means going back into the forest to collect twigs and um, they mix the twigs together with dung and mud to, to, to plaster the houses. Olympia has come up with a new type of manyata, equipped with solar cells and a rainwater tank. Trips to nearby rivers to fetch water are becoming less frequent. Women and children have more time now. They don't need to collect firewood for cooking anymore, either. Now their source of cooking heat is cow dung, which is first mixed with water and stored. As it decomposes, the dung produces methane gas, free biogas to burn. The dung from the cows, which are kept within the homestead, there's a collection point, so it's collected, and you don't need that very much for a daily use for the kitchen, in this case, because it's a single home, family home. And then the same is fed into the system, and there's a pipe connected to the homestead, and it's used for cooking. Cooking with biogas has made life much easier and healthier for Joyce Murungaru and her family. She convinced her husband to move into an eco manyata two years ago. For him, the step into a modernized world was not easy. Today, he only sees its benefits. In my house, there's light in the kitchen, and also the food can be cooked quickly compared to firewood. The food's ready in 20 or 30 minutes, so I've really benefited from an eco manyata. I hope a lot of eco manyatas are built because it preserves the forest. And there won't be soil erosion because the trees won't be cut. This solar-powered lamp changed the Murungaro family's daily routine. Previously, they were reliant on paraffin lamps, which are expensive and emit unhealthy fumes. Today, the fumes are gone, and they can save up money for food and their children's education. This solar lamp has helped me a lot. Before, my children couldn't study at night. We used a paraffin lamp, and when the wind came, it would put out the light. Now my children are doing well because they study at night. They've seen change. The local school also has solar power now, but most of the children don't have electricity at home. So they go to the Murungaro's eco manyata to do their homework together under electric light. The impact has been very good. Um, people have accepted the manyata very well. As such, I'm um, seeing the benefits, especially with the manyata, which has already been put up, have seen the benefits in terms of health, in terms of um, the environment, and also uh, we also have a, a better livelihood for the people who have to um, now use the new manyata. Oh. The biggest challenge is the cost. Not many families here have five to ten thousand dollars to spend, like the Murungarus. The hope is that new funding, subsidies, and continuous innovation will change that.